Okay. Welcome to the Monday, November 21st, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let all committee members and staff introduce themselves. Martha Smirsky, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, staff, member. <laughs> I feel like a staff these days. <laughs> Eric Gilbertson, member. <laughs> Benjamin Cheney, member. Okay. I will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures. Okay. Uh, looks like the people we have on remote currently are um, DRC members. So we're going to keep this kind of short. Um, all right. So for anyone who is viewing this meeting via Orca Media, um, you can participate in tonight's design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform. Um, either via video, and that would be typing this into your web browser, and that should bring you right into the meeting. Or you can call into the meeting using this phone number and this meeting ID. If anyone is having problems accessing the e meeting, you can email me at mprandall at montpelier-vt.org. I'll be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, please know if you do log into the meeting that turning on your video is optional. We do ask that you keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. Um, if anybody does log in and add in any members of the public, I'll maybe give them a little briefing once we've brought them in at a good point in the break. Um, just know that in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, and I would find this out via email, then the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Unless any of the members have anything to offer at this point, do we hear a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. I'll second it. Oh, I think Eric or seconded it, just he was muted. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Yep. Eric, Ben, and Steve. So we can go to the first application for 25 Court Street. Paul Hanlon and Marcia Hill, come up and have a seat and describe your application. Hi, I'm Paul Hanlon, Worcester, Vermont, and I have a building at 25 Court Street. I'm here to ask approval of a new sign after 38 years of the old one. <laughs> um, the we've tried to uh, almost replicate it, but not exactly. So we're trying for the same color, roughly the same size. I think it might be six inches wider than it was. Um, and we uh, need to replace the sign because it's deteriorating and we have different people in the building. Uh, so we'd like to uh, get a sign that is shown like in the cut sheet where um, the sign designer will make the sign and we'll have aluminum uh, slide in, I guess, or screw in uh, placards for each of the individual professional tenants. I think that's all I really need to say, but I'm not sure. So Claudia's sign will be removed or is it there? I... Claudia took her old sign. <laughs> yeah, that's her old sign from her. Uh, she used to have a... a place out back of the right. city hall there and uh since we didn't since we were going to replace the sign she just put the old one up temporarily so okay. people knew where she was yeah i don't like that one either <laughs> <laughs> so the new one will be exactly like the old one pretty much yeah yeah not exactly but you know uh, i mean we didn't even really design it we just showed a picture of it to the sign designer and said okay. could you get us something similar and there it is and paul you already spoke to my what I noticed, it was about six inches wider. The new one is about yes. six inches wider. That, wider. that allows those uh, placards to have a little bit bigger uh, print on them mm -hmm. and it's a little bit easier to see from the street. Mm -hmm. so. What it's is fine. the background color of the sign? Uh, pretty much like the, uh, the, the color of the trim on the building. Uh, the color picture was included. Yeah, it doesn't show on that screen very well. Okay. Yeah, I can see it pretty well here. But, um, it's very it's very close, it looks like, to what you have had originally. So yes. That original one is probably faded a little bit. It has faded, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so we, we would like it to be harmonious with the, the trim on the building and, um, you know, we're not looking for anything flashy just for a sign. So. Okay. And what is the material? Uh, well, I think it says what it is here. Uh, uh, sign foam. Sign foam, yep. whatever that is. I don't even know. So. Okay. Yeah, sign foam with aluminum plaques on it. Okay. And what was the old one? Uh, wood. wood. Yeah. The only one suggestion to make it more readable, go as dark with the blue as you can, because the darker the background, the more contrast and more readable. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> okay. So you can stay in the same color scheme. Just make it again as dark. As dark as you're willing to go. Again, the darker the background, the more readable it is from the street. And I'm assuming that letters are, are, will be white. Mm -hmm. uh, the, oh. the 25 Court Street would, but yeah. the individual signs, I think, would be the lighter color with dark on them. Okay, yes. Yeah. It's just a reverse. And again, however dark they're willing to go with their own names, again, the dark, the more contrast, the more readable. Well, we can't give these tenants too much choice. <laughs> <laughs> you want some consistency you, you there? Dictate, you dictate the colors and they put their names on the way they want. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, that, that pretty much was the deal. That I'd, I'd make the new sign and they'd, they'd be responsible for getting their little placards. But, of course, we'd want the colors to be consistent. Anybody have any questions, comments? There is online. Oh, okay. <laughs> there is a criteria sheet that has to do with signs in the district. And so I will read down through that. <clears throat> the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties. That's acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among the signs. That's the case here with the individual placards. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. Not possible here, but that sign beside the entry is certainly acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building. I'm assuming it's just screwed into the siding on the. Yes, this, uh, the installation shows aluminum brackets behind the sign. Okay. Yeah. Sign design color and topography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and shall not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. All in favor of the application for the sign, speak your names. Uh, this Eric. is I say yes. I found the mute button. I say yes. <laughs> and Steve says yes. So four into nothing in favor. Thank you. Uh, so again, just have you sign this. I mean, there's no suggestions on it, but you're here. So have you sign this form and um, I will get all of this to Audra. And um, have you talked to Audra whether or not she's going to mail you the permit or if you want no, to? No, either way, it's fine. You know, just okay, mailing is fine. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, there should be a, oh, you have a pen. Awesome. So yeah, there's a place. Just right below my name on the left there. Yep. <clears throat> And then hopefully Audra will get that in the mail this week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Good. Take care. Good to see you again. And the next application is 432 East State Street. Sue Book, GB Construction. 
Hi there. Hi. I'm Sue Book and I own 32 East State Street and I live here in Montpelier and I have a project I'd like to do to replace the very dilapidated looking um, but functional uh, fire escape with um, some safety platforms that I was advised to were okay to use by um, Chris and I think there was some other Michelle Michelle maybe went yep. to yeah so Michelle's the new building inspector right yeah yep um, and we had you want to just tell them about the conversation we had about you're adding a sixth platform as oh, well yes. correct I can show up I can show the pictures okay on the screen so okay that'd be it. great yeah you want to explain that? Yep. Well, I guess there's that. So. Right, so there's those four that are replacing, right? Right. And then two, not just the one that's shown in the picture in the packet, right? But both of the ones up on the, like the, the attic space on the main building. So this right. side right as well as this side right because the other one is a is a second bedroom yep yeah right there yep yep so that one has to be replaced yep so a when you say six. replacing the the platforms sue are you talking will you be replacing the entire process the entire steps and everything of the of the fire escape no the the fire escape is coming down mm -hmm. and it's being replaced with safety platforms and okay. so what you see in the drawing, um, those platforms okay. so people can get out of the building and be easily grabbed off with, with ladders okay. on the fire truck. Okay, I've never heard that term before. Oh. So I didn't know what it was. Which term is that? Safety, Safety platform. platform. Oh, well, that's what yeah. I call them. I don't yeah. know what they're called. Yeah, no, I think I think rescue platform or rescue safety platform, something okay. like that. Um, okay. But yeah, it's a it's a acceptable alternative, especially for the older historic buildings um, under building and safety codes. And they will be made of um, pressure treated wood and we will be staining them to match the building. And this is outside of our purview. I'm just curious that, so then that then makes it unnecessary to have the actual stairs down to the ground. Right. Wow, I mean that's an ugly thing. I'm excited to see that disappear. <laughs> You're I just, gonna miss all those stairs. <laughs> I just found out it, it's functional. <laughs> Meaning you used them? <clears throat> I did not. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you may consider as an option and it simplifies snow removal is that it's a little more costs a little more than just, you know, the, the one by six for whatever you're using for the flooring on the platforms, mm -hmm. but you can get those steel grates mm -hmm. and they're galvanized and they're, they have ridges on them. They're, it's like the platforms you see at ski areas where yeah. people walk yeah. and you will never have to shovel them because all the snow and ice goes right through. Mm -hmm. We have the stairs next door. Mm -hmm. And I used to have those shoveled many, many times in the winter, and I have not shoveled once in the last five years. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll consider you will, that. You uh, will quickly save the price of the of those by the lack of labor to shovel them all out, especially now that there's no way to get to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They carry them in cars or any of the steel places. Okay. All right. Thank you. Just Good saves idea. you a lot of grief. <laughs> yeah. Now I can, all I have to do is stop tenants from putting plants and things out there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe throw that in as an alternative on the form. Yes. It's awesome. in, and actually doesn't even show. I mean, it shows the, the railings and the spindles, but it doesn't show what the flooring is. So mm -hmm. you don't have to change anything else. What you usually do is you can frame for the platform mm -hmm. and instead of putting one by six or whatever you were going to use for the flooring of it, you use maybe a two by eight or whatever you're using for the platform, use a two by four inside of that and then cut the steel that just drops. You set it in. in. Yeah. Okay. 
And then if you want to secure it so it can't be removed, you can just take, they take a couple of screws with washers and yeah. to hold it in place. Yeah. But again, it will save you a lot of labor in the long run. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. I'll have to talk to GB about it. <laughs> Does anybody, any members have any questions or comments? I'm good. I'm good. Good improvement getting those stairs off the building. <laughs> I can read through the criteria for the change that you're making. <clears throat> there were. Is that one? Okay. There's not. There's not many on here. I think most of it is. It's just because it's the all projects. It's long. <laughs> yes, but I'm. I need to read through those. That good. The removal of historic materials or alterations of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship of that that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced where the severity of deterioration requires replacement. The new feature shall be replaced in kind in any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, such as sandblasting, not to be approved. This project is acceptable. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect to be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulator trim, and other forms of molding, or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Project, whoop, that's not applicable here. And I guess that's it. And the only optional change is that if you choose to use the steel grate flooring for those platforms, that's fine. Mm -hmm. okay. And again, that's an option for you. Okay. Based on that, all in favor, speak your names. This is Martha. I say yes. Eric says yes. Ben says yes. And Steve says yes. So it's approved. Great. And you can describe the next step so, for her. Same as with Paul. Once uh, Steve finishes signing this and filling this out, you can just sign this form. Um, and we, I will get this to Audra and she'll issue the permit. Have, you, have we discussed whether or not you want Normally we mail them. Do you want us to mail the permit and the notice to you? Or do you want us to want Audra to email you and you can come pick it up? Okay. Okay. So there will be in the envelope along with a copy of the permit will be a um, blue sort of firmer notice card. That notice card needs to get posted on the building or at least on the property in public view. Um, and so inside a front window, if you can see that from the sidewalk is fine, um, because that gives neighbors the 15 day appeal window notice. I don't anticipate anybody would have any problems with this project, but it's just one of those things you got to post it. Well, smaller towns, the zoning administrators post them for for people, but <laughs> we got too many to do that. <laughs> that and I think people would be get cranky if we came in tape stuff on their windows. <laughs> yeah, we do that for people now. It's, well, we, we were, before COVID, we were having people at least provide um, the envelopes and then COVID hit and it was, like, it was just easier to just do it at this point. Great. 
And I recommend the galvanized because yes. they never rust. I think ours have been in there 15 years now, 12 or 15 years, and they look like they did the day what they were installed. Nice. Thank you. Okay, thank and you. good luck with your project. Thank you. Can see me or not, but thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thanks so again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's an opening. <laughs> yeah. If you're interested. Okay. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from October 17th? Yes, um, I have a suggestion. It's not a complaint, it's a suggestion. At, at the end of the second application, the one about the um, whole cow sign, the world cow sign, it says Eric made a motion to table the application to November 7th. The motions pass on a five to zero vote. I would just suggest that we put in there the motion to table. Oh. Um, yeah. Just so that it, it is very clear what we did. That sounds great. I can, that's not a problem. Other than that, I, I think it's fine. Anyone else have any questions or do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move that. I'll second it. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Steve. I saw Ben say Ben. He okay. Was just muted. <laughs> Okay, minutes are approved. Does anyone have anything else to add at this point? Um, and our other business? Yeah, so uh, Eric mentioned this just before the meeting started while you weren't here, but I wanna make sure you hear it as well, Steve, and so that the public hears it. Um, the new design review guidelines that the Historic Preservation Commission drafted with some assistance from the Design Review Committee um, have been approved to be recommended by the um, Planning Commission for adoption by City Council. So I don't have a date yet for City Council to actually hear those. Um, we need to work out when that can fit in with their schedule of, for work on the budget. Um, we're hoping either next month or January, but we'll see. I will keep everybody posted for anyone who wants to attend that meeting. Um, you know, it's not a, a adoption of regulatory changes, it's adoption of the guidelines as policy. So it doesn't need to go through the formal double hearing process at city council, um, but it needs a little bit more than just consent agenda item. Um, so we're, we're looking forward and that will keep people posted probably via email. Okay, great. Anybody else have anything to add? With that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? A second? All in favor of adjournments, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Ben. And Steve, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody. See you on December 5th. Thanks. All right. Have Good a night. wonderful Thanksgiving. Yeah. Bye, guys. Have a great holiday. holiday. Yep. Good night, all. Good night. Good night.